Hello and thank you for tuning in to uh, uh, part two of uh, Wade Robson's uh, body language tutorial. Okay, uh, if you missed the first one, make sure you check it out before you uh, watch this one. Um, so let's continue from where we left off. Okay. He sexually abused me from seven years old until 14. I, I know okay, so just to recap, we saw what we mentioned before about the, um, the emblematic slips with the eyebrows raising and the mouse shrug. Okay, two behaviours you might not necessarily expect to find in someone telling the truth um, about a sexual abuse claim, but we'll come on to that later on. So let's continue. It's a, it's a difficult and personal question, but can you be more specific? Because you're accusing someone who is deceased of criminal activity. Yeah. So I need you to be a little more specific. Did he perform sexual acts on you? Did he force you to perform sexual acts on him? What was the nature of the abuse? Okay, so before Wade gets a chance to answer, I've got a problem with those series of questions, is that the compound questions, so the interviewer has asked Wade around about three or four questions, you see, and, that, and that's the problem. Wade could just answer yes, but it's unclear as to what he's answering yes to. So a little tip, whenever you're asking somebody a question and you're looking for um, an honest answer, just make sure you ask one question at a time. It's uh, a good little trick to um, to uh, interview somebody as one question at a time. So he might he made a little bit of an error here by asking way too many questions. And let's see what how he responds. Did he perform sexual acts on you? Did he force you to perform sexual acts on him? What was the nature of the abuse? Yes, exactly what you said. He performed sexual acts on me and forced me to perform sexual acts on him. How old? Now, where have we seen that before? That is parrot language. That's a parrot statement. He made exactly the same statement. I think it was the first thing he said um, to the interview. So, again, he's mirroring back exactly what he's said. And, again, we've seen that before uh, when somebody um, is unable to almost think for themselves. And it is where they almost need, like, prompting into ans uh, answering a question. And again, whenever I hear parrot statements, alarm bells start ringing because it's almost like the interviewer is almost answering their question for them. It means that the interviewer, um, the, well, the interviewee doesn't have to do much work. It's almost like he's being spoon-fed the answers. And I think that's what Wade did there. He just mirrored exactly word for word what the interviewer said. And again, that for me is a red flag. Yes, exactly what you said. He performed sexual acts on me. And another area I've got a problem with, he also made the same asymmetrical shoulder shrug. And watch how he broke eye contact. I mean, it's interesting how he's increasing eye contact all the time with the interviewer, again, which is, um, which is quite significant. It started, seven. And how long did it last? Until about 14. Now, did, when you testified in 2005, and you took the stand and you raised your right Okay, so let's just scoot back perform sexual acts on you did he force you to perform sexual acts on him what was the nature of the abuse yes exactly what you said okay and we see those eyebrows arch up again again could be a, a uh, emblematic slip nature again which we talked abuse. about before yes exactly we can see how his uh, left shoulder is up and down force you to perform sexual Watch acts that on left him shoulder. what was the nature of the abuse yes exactly what you said he performed sexual acts on me and forced me to perform sexual acts on him how old were you when it's okay so again some classic interesting behavior there force you to perform sexual acts on him what was the nature of the abuse yes exactly what you said he performed sexual acts on and something there we see a hand shrug come in as well and it is where he rotates the palm inward watch for it again i'll just drop it down here so you can see watch for the palm raise and this is again this is called a hand shrug him. what was the nature of the abuse yes exactly what you said he performs there it was it was the hand shrug and again we're seeing a lot of shrugging behaviors we can see the mouse shrug we see the asymmetrical shrug we see the eyebrow shrug and now i see the hand shrug so again we're seeing a lot of behaviors um shrugging no confidence i don't really know that's what those messages um, correlate to me. They convey the message that I don't really have confidence in what I've just said. And we're seeing a lot of those behaviors. These are called emblematic slips. Signs that subconscious, it really isn't in tune with what's going on. There's no synchrony between words and gestures. The emblematic slips often come out as a subconscious way um, of dealing with things we're not really, we're not, we're not telling the truth to some degree. So it's quite, quite interesting. And forced me to perform sexual acts on him. How old were you when it started? Seven. And how long did it last? Until about 14. Now, 
did when you testified in 2005 mm -hmm. and you took the stand and you raised your right hand and you yeah. swore under oath that nothing sexual ever happened between you and Michael Jackson. Yeah. Why did you lie? You know, I said what I understood and I said what I was able to say okay. from seven years old, from day one of the abuse. Michael told me that we loved each other and that this was love, that this was a, an expression of our love. And then you'd follow that up with, you know, but if you ever tell anyone what we're doing, both of our... Now, the problem I have there from a statement analysis point of view, he uses a present tense terms, term to describe a past, te past tense action. He used the word doing, which again, I have a problem with. That should have been with what we have done, not doing. Doing is talking about it as if it's happening today. It didn't happen today. It happened many years ago over a seven-year period. So you'd expect to find a past tense term to describe the abuse. Love, that this was a, an expression of our love. And then you'd follow that up with, you know, but if you ever tell anyone what we're doing... That should be what we have done. It's already happened. It's in the past. So again, there... I think that is the wrong terminology, and we often some um, some experts say that when we start making up stories, we forget to put them in the past tense. We talk about them as if they were happening um, in the present or in the future tense. So the word "doing" there for me could be a slight indicator that potentially the story that he's um, so-called remembering isn't coming from memory. But again, that statement analysis for you. Both of our lives and our careers will be over. Um, when I was 11, when the first uh, trial was going on, the criminal investigation in 93, mm -hmm. um, he would call me every day and roll. He would call me every day isn't the same as he called me. He would call me isn't the same as he called me again. So again, that could be interesting statement as well. Interesting. Okay, and, and, and tell me the same sort of things and also tell me then that if anyone ever thought that we did these things, any of these sexual things. That we did, not done. Again, interesting terminology that we did these things, not that we have done these things. Done indicates past tense. Again, same with um, we did. Again, that same past tense, but I think he could have worded that sentence better than he did. Again, so yeah, interesting. Both of us would go to jail for the rest of our lives. When you testified in 2005, did it? Okay, and also. Of us would go to jail for the rest of the day in role play and, and, and tell me the same sort of things and also tell me then that if anyone ever thought that we did these things, any of these sexual things, that both of us... Now, it's interesting how he just refers to these as things. Now, that really isn't the harsh language you'd expect to find in someone describing a, a series of, of, you know, quite serious sexual allegations and sexual abuse. The word things um, doesn't really convey the message of strength and conviction in, what's, in what he's just said. Um, so, again, so I've got a problem with that there as well. So, that's quite interesting. Uh, Willow, shush. So, let's continue. For the rest of our lives. When you testified in 2005, did, it, did Michael Jackson or anyone working for him offer you money to say the things you said? Did they tell you you must lie on the stand at that time? No, there was no money. There was no you must lie. Michael. No, there's a speech error there and a false start. Listen to that again. He's about to say something, but he stops himself. Offer you money to say the things you said? Did they tell you you must lie on the stand at that time? No, there was no money. There was no. You must lie. There was no money. There was no shh. You must lie. So again, that is quite interesting. I wonder what he was going to say before he corrected himself. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So that's a speech error. Again, quite interesting. Michael, when, when he would talk to me before these things were going on and he would call me every day as these things were happening. Okay, he would call me, not he called. Again, that's quite interesting as well. Okay, it might be an inclination that, again, the story that he's describing isn't coming from memory. Okay, he's making it up on the spot. Okay, statement analysis is uh, is quite interesting. It was okay, interesting behaviour. Complete manipulation and brainwashing. It wasn't any sense of the truth on the phone. He would role play with me and train me for these scenarios. Okay, so he refers to the scenarios as the fact that he's, he's lying in court there uh, and not the scenarios in any kind of sexual way. Okay, I just want to clear that up. You, know, uh, you say it's not repressed memory. You yeah. say you always knew and had in your mind what happened between you and Michael Jackson. You also say that when you finally had a son of your own, that it was looking at that son that made you think, if anyone ever did to your son what Michael Jackson did to and with you, 
you kill that person. Yeah, during uh, I'm a father and I became a father to Okay, and again we see the same speech error there as well. Okay, but what's interesting is the next section is how freely Wade speaks about his son. Um he has a different speech rate and he speaks a lot more clear. Uh, with more confidence and with less hesitations and less errors. So listen to how he speaks now about his you, son. You killed that person. Yeah, during uh, I'm a father, and I became a father two and a half years ago to this beautiful baby boy. And um, during the first 18 months of his life, I collapsed into two nervous breakdowns. So in this bit here, he's, he's talking with more confidence, um, freely, uh, without a care in the world. And this is a world away from the behavior he has just displayed, talking about these allegations of sexual abuse against Michael Jackson. That almost like almost looks like he's pulling things out of thin air, whereas this section looks like he's actually possibly telling the truth about his breakdown and with his son. And again, if you watch the uh, the part one of the video and watch this section now, it's quite telling how his demeanor quickly changes. Yeah, during, uh, I'm a father, and I became a father two and a half years ago to this beautiful baby boy. And um, during the first 18 months of his life, I collapsed into two nervous breakdowns terrifying nervous breakdowns at that point i had no idea what was wrong with me what was going on during the second one this thing happened where i started looking at him and imagining him being a victim of the sexual abuse that i was at the hands of michael and for the first time in my life i began to realize that my completely numb and unexplored feelings in relationship to what michael did to me might be a problem and maybe i need to speak to someone about it How okay right here so there's nothing really much to glean from that section there well, let's continue. Lord Weitzman, who's a lawyer for the Jackson estate, said this in a statement. Mr. Robson has adamantly denied under oath and in numerous interviews over the past 20 years that Michael Jackson ever did anything inappropriate to him. Now he wants us to believe that he committed perjury at least twice and has been lying to anyone and everyone about Mr. Jackson since the early 1990s so he can file a claim for money. Mr. Robson's transparent lawsuit comes nearly four years after Michael passed. His claim is outrageous and sad. Jermaine Jackson, Michael's brother, said Wade Robson is full of, and then used an expletive. What's your response? Okay, right, so, yeah. so we can see one of the universal facial expressions flashing there Wade from Wade. If you didn't see it, I shall pause it Jermaine for you. Jermaine Jackson, Michael's brother, said Wade Robson is full of, and then... Okay, right here we can see the asymmetrical smirk, which is called contempt. Um, okay, and it's understandable to why he flashed contempt there. Okay, that's a superiority thing. So in essence, he's feeling more superior uh, than Jermaine for him um, um, calling. Well, I don't need to repeat what he said. It's an offensive word, but again, he, I expect to see contempt in that in that scenario there. So there's nothing really much to be gleaned about that behaviour. I would do the same thing if somebody had accused. Uh, me of being full of shit, then I might well flash them contempt as well, thinking, oh, they're bloody hopeless, you know. So, again, that's interesting behavior, but again, nothing too sinister about that display. Used an expletive. Mm -hmm. What's your response? I understand completely how hard it is to understand. Okay, that sentence there tells me he's stalling for time again. Listen to what he says. He almost just repeats the sentence. Jack. He almost uses the exact same words just to formulate a sentence. Michael's brother said, Wade Robson is full of, and then used okay. an expletive. Contempt, What's fine. Your response? I understand completely how hard it is to understand this. Um, that being said, the idea that I would make all of this up and put myself, my wife, my son, my entire family through this you know, extremely stressful and painful experience all for the sake of money is completely incomprehensible. That's called a non-emphatic denial, and that's where you'll start bringing other people in to verify um, that you are of good sound mind and character. Again, and obviously it's a classic indicator that uh, it's almost like saying I would never do something like that. It's almost like you're not really denying the act. You're just implying that you would never do something because you are of sound character. So basically he's saying it's, um, you know, uh, let's listen to what he says. I think he simply says that it's... It that is. I would make all of this up and put myself, my wife, he says, my incomprehensible. son, my entire family through this you know, extremely stressful and painful experience. All for the sake of money is completely but incomprehensible. That's what you're going. So yes, yeah, so you're, just, you're just saying that the idea um, that you would do something like this just for money is incomprehensible. Okay, that's just the idea of it. He's not denying the act. Okay, so that is quite an interesting um, point of view from statement analysis, but we shall digress. You're going to be accused of. You're going to be accused. You're going to say you, you defended Michael Jackson while he was alive. 
because he was good for your career. Mm -hmm. And now that he's gone, there's an opportunity here to sue his estate. He can't defend himself and get money. Why didn't you go to the lawyers and do this quietly and try to, to settle some, right. make some kind of a deal? Right, because I've lived in silence and denial for 22 years, and I can't spend another moment in that in order to truly heal I have to speak my truth and I have to speak the whole truth. Okay, and again, we hear, we hear the word my truth and we heard that before in the opening sentence. And again, I have a problem with my truth. My truth and the truth are two totally different things and especially the person um, who you're um, alleging sexually abused you over a seven-year period can't defend themselves. Again, I'd expect to hear the truth and not my truth. But again, we're talking in statement artists here. That's one thing that you'll never see from me. I'm never going to go away with this for the sake of money. I'm never going to be silenced for money. That's not going to happen. With, with all that you've been through, all your, the work you did with Michael Jackson and what you now allege was sexual abuse by Michael Jackson. When I say his name to you this morning, what do you think of? Heartbreak, pain, anger, and compassion. Now then, order is important. Very, very important. And for me... Um, there's something amiss here. Okay, a serious sexual allegation would fill you with disgust, shame, sadness, fear. We don't and see anything. The first thing you said there is heartbreak. Was sexual. That's interesting. I would suffer a great heartbreak if my missus left me, not if I'd just been sexually abused as a child for seven years. That is not Abuse. necessarily the right opening word you would Bye, use when asked. When I say his name to you this morning, what do you think of? Heartbreak. So we don't see the eyebrows flash up for heartbreak. Pain. Don't see the eyebrows flash for pain. Anger, the eyebrows flash up for anger, which is interesting because anger is an emotion where the eyebrows dip down and together are not up. Up is more relative to fear and surprise. Uh, the eyebrows certainly don't go up in anger. And on the next one we can see... And compassion. Compassion for somebody who is alleged to have sexually abused you over a seven-year period, and I do not see compassion on his face. That is really interesting. And it's interesting those... Um, Adjectives Michael he describes Jackson, Michael Jackson. And, now allege was sexual abuse and let's have a look how his behaviour and his Michael facial Jackson. expressions his name to you this morning, what do you correlate think? with what you just said. You think of heartbreak. There is no heartbreak on his face. There is no anguish there. We don't see any tensing of his face. Pain. We don't see any articles there on his face of pain. Anger, the eyebrows raise. Anger does not raise eyebrows. It dips them down and together to focus. Also, tensing of the upper eyelids, tensing of the jaw. Don't see that. And compassion. Don't see compassion. I do see a little bit of knitted eyebrows there for sadness, but again, it's nothing to get um, flustered about. There's, um, yeah, there's no excuse. And again, like I said to you before, there is no... I can see no negative emotion there. I see no disgust, no shame, no sadness, no fear, no contempt. I don't see anything there that is you would sense, you know, feel the the anguish in his face about being sexually abused over a seven year period. I just don't see that. I just don't see it in his behaviour. I don't see it in his voice or his face. I just don't see that. Maybe maybe I'm being um, biased, or maybe I have a truth bias towards Michael Jackson. But I mean, please leave me a comment. Can you see in his face that he's experiencing the emotions that he describes? Because I don't see that. For what he did to me, and I believe many others, but um, but he was a troubled man, and every effect has its cause. You know, the image that one presents to the world um, is not the whole explanation of who someone is. You know, Michael Jackson was, yes, an incredibly talented artist, and an, with an incredible gift. He was many things, and he was also a pedophile and a child sexual abuser. His fans have been contacting me on Twitter this morning in, in record numbers, Wade. Yeah. And a lot of them are saying you're a traitor. You understand their emotions this morning? I understand how confusing it is to understand, you know, how hard it is to understand. I get that. Okay, but right, yeah. So we're getting toward the end of the interview here. Again, just to recap, he did label that Michael right, Jackson was a pedophile. Okay, which is something I vigorously, calls. completely yeah. and utterly the deny. Um, you know, I've seen Michael world. Jackson's behaviour on numerous occasions. I even wrote a big book about his behaviour called Behind the Mask, which I'll come to very shortly. 
and I just don't see that, and I just don't, and I, I'm looking through these allegations, and I'm looking at his behaviour here, and I just do not see in any stretch, form, imagination that this man is telling the truth. Okay, from um, his behaviour. Is not the whole explanation of who someone is. You know, Michael Jackson was, yes, an incredibly talented artist, and a, with an incredible gift. He was many things, and he was also a pedophile and a child sexual abuser. His fans have been contacting me on Twitter this morning in, in record numbers, Wade. Yeah. And a lot of them are saying you're a traitor. You understand their emotions this morning? I understand how confusing it is to understand, you know, how hard it is to understand. I get that. But um, all it takes is a little bit of education into child sexual abuse and realizing how unfortunately typical my scenario is. Okay, it's interesting how he refers to the abuse and the allegation as just a scenario. And again, that that for me isn't the strong enough word to describe these, um, you know, the, the allegation. I mean, scenario just isn't isn't strong enough for me. And I think I can I think that's another telling point from a, a statement artist point of view is when, you know, I'd expect to hear really strong evidence and strong words and strong testimony against Michael Jackson and. You know, and scenario for me just doesn't cut it. Again, with other words that he's used throughout this statement, just don't cut it for me. There is no, you know, franticness in his voice. There's no fear. There's no shame. There's no disgust. There's none of that. It's almost like it's almost quite robotic and almost quite. Um, I just you know, there's just no emotion there for me. And maybe maybe you agree, maybe you don't. You know, leave me some comments the on trauma this. Trauma and the psychological effects of child sexual abuse last for so long. You know, I had no understanding of this until up to just over a year ago. And I'm just at the beginning of my healing process. I'm sure I'll be... Right, so Wade, I uh, did some research on Wikipedia, so I apologise if it's not accurate. But uh, Wade is 30, which means he's one year older than I am. I'm 29. And he said that uh, he had no idea until a year ago. Let's just double check that. I don't want to accuse him of something he didn't say. That's how check. unfortunately typical my scenario is. The trauma and the psychological effects of child sexual abuse last for so long. You know, I had no understanding of this until up to just over a year ago. Okay, so over a year ago, so he was abused for seven years. That would mean it was it took him fifteen years to come out, and he had no idea until he was twenty nine that he was sexually abused by Michael Jackson. Yet he said he was forced to perform, um, you know, sex acts on him. I mean, I just don't understand that. I, I really don't understand how this allegation comes out. And he only realised last year that he was sexually abused by Michael. I just, I just can't quite get my head around that. You know, there were, he, he made it before that there was no suppressed, um, you know, memory of this. I'm assuming there was no hypnotism or anything like that at all. I just don't understand how the, this has come out 15 years later after he's testified, you know, on, on the trial of Michael Jackson in good faith and in good character of Michael Jackson. And he's been praising him all those years. And yet he comes out with, you know, with this, um, you know, accusation. I'm the beginning of my healing process. I'm sure I'll be dealing with this for the rest of my life. But um, I'm so thankful that this is happening now. Because now I can get my life back. And my son, my son is the one that saved my life. And there we go. And that's the end of the interview. Um, so again, I mean, I just, I'm watching this and I'm seeing emblematic slips coming in. I'm seeing a lot of shrugs, a lot of shrugging behavior from the eyebrows. We see a hand shrug with the palm opening, almost like a pleading gesture. It'll happen very briefly. We see the mouth shrug and we see a lot of action in the shoulders as well. Again, we see a lot of statement analysis of present tense terms like doing, things like that. You know, we, if you were talking about uh, past tense terms, you were said that we had done this, and that we you don't hear, you don't necessarily hear those words. Um, again, he, he, I, one thing I don't hear is the harsh testimony. Again, when he was asked to describe Michael Jackson, he used the words like heartbreak and pain and, and compassion. And these aren't necessarily the words you'd expect to hear in somebody describing a serious sexual allegation over a seven-year period. Again, I just don't see the emotion on his face or the emotion in his voice or in his behavior. I don't see any of that. I see how his behavior changes when he was talking about the sexual abuse allegations with Michael Jackson, how it changes into a more freely open and more confident Wade when he's talking about his child and his breakdown. His behavior changes, which again is quite interesting. 
Um, but from a body language point of view and a statement analysis point of view, um, you know, I, I think I'm with the Jacksons on this one 100% that I, I see no credibility in his testimony at the moment. You know, what he is saying just doesn't really weigh up from a body language point of view. There is no correlation between what he does and how he acts, both, you know, with his facial expressions uh, and with his with his general body language and with the defensive posture he starts with the, at the start of the interview. He finishes with that same posture as well, I noticed as well. So, again, that is quite revealing behavior. Um, so, mm, very interesting from Wade Robinson. It'll be interesting to see if he does another interview so I can, uh, uh, you know, establish a baseline for his behavior when he was talking about the allegations. You know, I can't emphasize that enough. You know, this video that I've done alone isn't um, evidence to suggest that he isn't telling the truth. I would need to see another video of him talking about the same allegations on a different talk show with somebody else, you know, so I could uh, establish a baseline and see if those shrugs and those eyebrows and those mouth shrugs are part of his baseline or whether he does them when he's not telling the whole truth okay so it's quite interesting behavior so there we go so just to recap uh, i'm also the author of the international bestseller which is uh, behind the mask what michael jackson's body language told the world again so if you're interested in in um, looking at the body language of uh, oprah winfrey when he had the the interview with uh, with oprah winfrey i think it was 1993 memory serves and looking at um, the Martin Bashir interview as well if you're interested in the, in the body language that both Martin and Michael Jackson displayed um, then this book is for you as well and they also cover some unseen footage from that uh, Martin Bashir um, film as well so again if you're interested in learning more about Michael Jackson's body language and what that had to say about you know say to the world and how what it said when he was talking about those allegations of child abuse then this is the book for you so just type my name into Amazon um, which is Craig James Baxter or I'll leave a link under Underneath this video for you to check out as well so there you go so that's the wade uh, robson body language video tutorial taken care of um again it, again body language is so fascinating um you know and it's such an interesting topic and i'm so blessed to have um you know to contribute to this wonderful topic and i will continue to contribute it for as long as i can so don't forget to check me out on facebook which is understanding body language liars cheats and happy feet uh, on my website which is www.allaboutbodylanguage.com or you can hit me up on twitter which is at body language uk so there we go so lovely catching up my friends i hope you enjoyed this video tutorial i shall uh, load some more as and when um, I see fit and I shall look forward to speaking to you all soon. So take care my friends and bye bye for now.